check, check. Well, welcome, guys. There are seats over here. There's some seats on this side. If you're a kid, sit on the floor. There's like 110 seats, and I'm sure there'll be more people than that. So you just have to sprawl all over the place. But welcome to the Belonging Service 2022. Yay! All right, well, <laughs> that's good. Clap. You should clap. Um, let me just quickly talk to you a little bit about belonging so you understand what's going to happen and why we do what we do. So every year, we as a community decide if this is our, sp- our, our space to be. And we do that in a number of ways. Number one, we just say we belong here. And that's open to anyone who says, this is my community. You don't have to believe anything in particular. You just say, I belong here. And the way you do that is a different kind of symbol each year. Maybe decorate a letter, as you see on the wall, or chess pieces. There are tons of different ways we've done that. This year, it is a stone that you have decorated, which you'll put on this table. But the second way is that you sign a covenant this year and you say, this is my spiritual community. This is where I belong. This is where I'm going to put my energy, my time, my giving. This is where I belong spiritually. And when you do that, we take hold of 1 Peter 2, starting in verse 4, as kind of the theme for that. And it says, as you come to him, the living stone, which is... Um, Good, we're doing stones this year. Rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. If you sign the covenant, what you're saying is for this year, me, as a priest, a royal priest in the kingdom of God, this is where I'm going to practice being a priest. And in fact, from the very beginning, we call our people who sign their covenants ministers. So you are ordained, in a sense, as a minister. We're saying you are a priest of the village. So if somebody asks what you do, you don't have to tell them your job. You can just say, I'm a priest at the village. And then they'll be like, what? That's crazy. But it's important, right? It's important because it's what we're invited into. Now, how will you do that? Well, during... There's going to be a time when uh, you have an opportunity to watch a whole bunch of pictures of what's happened over the last year, and you can come take communion. You can sign the covenant. On the covenant, there are parts where you can check that says, maybe you're a little new and you're like, "Uh, I'd like to be part of a pilgrim group or a Bible study. You can check that. Or I'd like to be discipled. You can check that. Or I'd like to hang out with people who live near me. You can check that. And we'll kind of connect you. So you have some options when you sign. But it's important that you print your name. Because last year it took us six months to figure out three members because we couldn't figure out their signatures. And they refused to claim them. The second thing that's happening tonight, today, in the middle of the day, is that we are ordaining some people. And we're doing this. This is exciting for our community, and we're doing it in, in two ways. Number one, we are ordaining Susan, and I want to read Susan Seepin, so wave, there she is. I want to just read Ephesians chapter 4 and explain what kind of ordination we're doing. So Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse 11, it says, So Christ himself gave apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers to equip people for works of service so the body of Christ may be built up until we reach the unity of the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Now, we are ordaining Susan as a pastor because she has lived for 21 years amongst us as a pastor. We are, rec- we are as elders, that would be me and Rod, Pastor Mark for the moment, Pastor Michael when he gets ordained, But just the three of us, we are commending her to you and the work that she has done amongst us, just like Paul commended many others, calling them people who contended with him, fellow apostles, junior apostles in Christ. He had lots of different names. But we are commending her as a pastor. Now, it's because she does predominantly shepherding in our community, but also she is an apostle. 
She's apostolic and she's evangelistic. She's led people to Christ and she is a teacher. You all love her teaching. People say, oh, you should let her teach more unless you. Right? And I've heard that. So that's an actual quote. Um, so, but it's a little weird in our culture to call someone an apostle, right? When she goes out into the community and she says, I'm Prophet Sue or Apostle Sue, pastor covers all of those. So we are ordaining and recognizing and commending her to you. The second, third thing that's happening, and this is super exciting, is that we are ordaining Michael Kuzno, and we are installing him as an elder in our community. I forgot my spiritual drill, but we'll work it out. But here's the important difference, and you need to understand this, is he is being ordained as an elder and a pastor in our community. So yes, he's here to equip, but... Titus 1.9 tells us he must, this is an elder and an overseer, must hold firmly to the trustworthy message as it has been taught so that he can encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. One of the things, Mark, or Michael's primary job, as we're ordaining him to, is to be someone who holds tightly to the gospel, encourages you with the gospel, and refutes false gospels. That is one of his primary tasks. Yes, he will also pastor you. He will also teach you. He will do all those kinds of things. But we're installing him as an elder, and that is very, very important. All right. So you got belonging, how it's going to work. You got ordination, how it's going to work. Let me give you a few announcements, and then we'll get into this. It's really actually a short service today. So announcements. All right. Give me a click. There you go. If you don't know... The Village has a podcast, and there are always new podcasts. It's called Healing the City. Tons of information go out on that. You should, you should uh, listen to it. So if you have any kind of podcasting ability to listen to podcasts, like Apple Podcasts or Spotify or any number of things or the Internet, in any way, you can listen to the Healing the City podcast. I'm going to send the volunteer list around. It's very unlikely that most of you will see it, but there are some uh, spots that need to be filled, I think, and so I'm just going to hand it to you. If you don't know about this, you can pass it to the next person. All right. If you're visiting with us, we welcome you to this weird service. Somebody will tell you what's going on afterwards. Stay here for barbecue. We love you. Get to know us. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, one more thing. So, when we are done ordaining Susan and Michael, there's an ancient tradition in the Orthodox Church when you ordain um, deacons and bishops is that the old community sings axios, which is the Greek word for worthy. And so as we lay hands on them, you will be led in singing axios over them and what we're all saying together is you are worthy you are worthy of this we're commending them all right with that said susan would you come on up you can flip the slide i'm gonna turn this over to rod Cool. <laughs> I feel small. <laughs> this is the first time I feel small. I think I think it's good. Susan Seepin, today the village wishes to recognize all the ways in which you have served our church community by calling you to be our pastor. In scripture, pastors have a particular role in the church. They're to care for the people, shepherd them, minister to their needs. 
They're also to preach the word and bring the gospel to bear in people's lives. They're to disciple people into the faith and teach them the ways of the kingdom. Today you join with biblical notables such as Philip's four daughters who prophesied and spoke God's word to people around them. And you join with Anna, the prophetess, who met the infant Jesus and announced Jesus' kingship to all who came to the temple where Anna lived her life. You join with Priscilla, who, along with her husband Aquila, instructed Apollos, a powerful preacher in the scriptures, for the sake of the building up of the church. Those are the kinds of things pastors do. And they're the kinds of things we've seen you do. Throughout the history of the village, we've noticed it. And today we would ordain you to the task that you've already been doing. On behalf of the village, first of all, let me thank you. for your faithful service. Let me honor you for the beautiful ways in which you've laid down your life for us. And finally, should you accept this ordination, I would charge you to continue in the good works that God has begun in you. Will you accept this ordination, this call to be our pastor? I charge you, Susan Seepin, to minister with the love and mercy of God the Father. I charge you to minister wholeheartedly the grace, kindness, and gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. I charge you to minister daily through the wisdom and guidance of the Holy Spirit. I charge you to live in submission to the Church of God through its elders. I charge you to preach the word and administer the sacraments faithfully for the edification of the church. Susan, do you accept this charge? People of God, I charge you to honor Susan Sepin as one of your pastors. Heed her instruction, yield to her care, provide for her needs, honor her with love and affection. Do you accept this charge? You may answer, we do, God helping us. We do, God helping us. I take great delight knowing that as I step away from my pastoral duties, I have the joy of handing it off to someone who is humble and gracious so powerfully gifted. So you're like a daughter to me. <laughs> so I take great joy in you. May our Father richly bless you in the days ahead as you take on this beautiful task of serving this lovely community. I'd like to do this really awkward thing now Of, of washing your feet. At my own ordination, it was um, it was just as awkward as this is going to be. Mm. Yeah, just put it on the ground. And um, And I remember they handed me this towel afterwards and I still have it. It's kind of a precious thing. I'm sure when I go the way of all things, my kids will go, why did dad have this dumb towel sitting in a box here and it'll disappear? Um, this is a little thing for you and me. <laughs> Just so you know. Um, Um, I 
Isaiah 52, verse 7, let me read it. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. You'll get to say that a lot to the people of the village. Your God reigns. So now I'd like to wash your feet. Go now and wash the feet of the people of the village. Serve them as only a pastor can. (laughs) Shepherds have staves. By the way, uh, if you could hand me my... uh, uh, This is actually a staff. In, in In the Old Testament, they took a staff. What it really was was a small sapling tree with a root ball that had hardened and they gave it to the shepherd and he would use it to break the legs of sheep who were nasty and wandered off so to make sure that they couldn't wander off he'd actually break their legs and then he'd have to carry them around for a while Um, this was a gift to me but I want to forward it on to you as a gift so this is this is the staff you also, you also get this. This is much more gentle, right? You just sort of gently guide people around. You kind of pull them to where they should be. Um, the rod, sorry, the rod and the staff. Did I say, I called this a staff. This is the rod, this is the staff. Um, so you have a rod and a staff. Um, use this one a whole lot more than you use this one. <laughs> because you really get tired of carrying people around. (laughs) Um, But use them both to gently guide and direct the people um, that are placed under your care. Sue, I love you, and I'm so glad to call you Pastor Sue. Michael, where are you? Come on up. Have a seat. And I will, I mean, I'll just tell you, you, you don't have to take your shoes off. You're good. There you go. <laughs> so a couple, couple things, Michael, that I thought were really interesting. And if you're a person to read signs, then they're a really interesting sign. Um, but when you first came to the village, uh, almost 17 years ago, You invited everybody to your birthday party. And there's a picture on the old website with your face. I don't know how old were you when you first got here. 17 years younger, so like 23. And it says, do you know this man? He wants you to come to his birthday party. (laughs) And a lot of people came. Yeah. I'm super excited about this, and I hope that I can get through it without crying, so... Um, I, I just have a f- couple things to offer as you look around at all these people. Uh, you've been around for 17 years, 
And so some of them are your peers. <laughs> some of them are your older brothers and sisters, and some of them are old enough to have you as a kid. And they've gotten to be part of your ups and downs and experience the goods and bad of your life and the things that you've wrestled with. But now you are stepping into their life with some authority, and that's going to be a little awkward for some of them, particularly your peers, um, and maybe those who could be your parents. Um, one of the things that my mom had told me, and I'll, you know because I've told you this over and over again, she said, Eric, when I became a pastor at 28, she said, nobody's going to listen to you till you turn 40. Um, and uh, you're turning, you turned 40, so <laughs> you're in luck. <laughs> People are... People are going to listen to you now with hope. I just have a few things I want to offer to you um, in becoming an elder uh, and, so, and give, offer you a commission. So I want to start in Psalm 1, which is one of my favorite psalms. And it starts this way. It says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked or stand in the way that the sinner take or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on the law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yield its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Michael, one, as an elder, your job is to seek out the sinner and to seek out the mocker and to call them to Jesus. The second thing is that you're called to help all of us not get caught up with the sinner and the mocker, but to align ourselves with Jesus. But to do that, you have to meditate on the law day and night. And that word meditate, in fact, at your birthday, I had a conversation with someone about meditation and what it was and all that kind of stuff. But this word literally means to be consumed so much with something that you can't control your body that you giggle and laugh and groan because of the deep impact it has on you. So that it's a state that you are invited into as you engage the word. And in that way, you can call us um, to follow Jesus and you will prosper and you will bear fruit at the right time and not the wrong time <laughs> so that we can really enjoy that and you can protect us. So my invitation to you um, as an elder as one who is going to know and defend the gospel and call us to do that um, and to bear fruit, I want to give you a symbol of that. I want to give you a new Bible. And we have your name on there with pastor because that's now your first name. <laughs> Hopefully we spelled it right. If we didn't, um, then it will be memorable. <laughs> <laughs> and also, if you lose your Bible here at church, now we know whose Bible it is. <laughs> but I think this is an important thing. Your Bible, as an elder, it's the thing you're invited to do. Now, the second part of being an elder and a pastor is that you get to anoint people. And I want to, with oil, and pray for them. So I want to read James 5, starting in verse 3. It says, Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. One of the things that is so cool at the village is that every month, People come and are anointed with oil and prayed over, and now you get to be part of that. So because you're part of it, you have to have your own oil as an elder. So it's in the bag. Oh, it's in the bag that I just moved off. Oh, it's a gift bag. I'm looking for... Can you show it to everyone? <laughs> oh, no. Yes, it was specially for anointing oil. W one last thing I want to add. Ah, there you go. She should show everybody that, yes. You get a cool anointing. 
Yes, you load the oil in here. So one last thing. As an elder, you are invited into the sensitive parts of people's lives, the confession of their sin. And you have to do that with delicate words and with a listening ear. And so I invite you into that too, along with the rest of us. Now, I need to ask you, do you want to do this? Do you accept this commission? All right, everybody. You heard what he said. You've known, many of you have known him for a long time. Some of you just got to know him. Are you willing to commit to him being your pastor and elder? If you are, say, we do. Because <laughs> I want, to, now that you've made that uh, a note to God helping us and God helping him, he uh, is going to practice on you. Because like being a doctor who you practice, he will practice being an elder. So sometimes he might cut your arm off. You need to tell him that really hurt. Could you repair that? <laughs> because he's new at this in a lot of ways. And so it's your job to walk on alongside him and encourage him and challenge him and be willing to be the guinea pig a little bit with him and let him shepherd you and elder you. Did you give him a hand? <laughs> now it's official on your Bible, and you are Pastor Michael Kuzno. I'll give him a hand. Come on over here, Susan. All right, so this is going to be a little chaotic, but one of the things we believe is that the kingdom of God is where all the children are. And so when we ordain pastors and elders, we have the children come lay hands on them. So if you are a child and you would like to come lay hands on Michael and Susan, who, who are your new pastors, come on up, guys, and lay your hands on them. Would you stand? Eric, would you stand behind Michael? Yes. I'm on up. You can put your hands on him. Put your hands on him. Rod, would you stand behind Sue? you join us in prayer. Father, we thank you for Susan, and we thank you for Michael. We thank you for the ways that they have served you and your kingdom. We thank you for the calling that you have placed on their lives, um, the ways that they have stepped into the lives of the people around them. We pray that you would place your hands on them to hold them up, to care for them as they um, place their hands on, on us and care for us. Um, would you minister to their souls? Would you draw them into prayer? Um, would you draw their eyes continually back to you? Michael and Susan, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Would you stand as you're able and we're going to sing Axios. And it's going to be awkward and that's great. It's going to be less awkward if you sing really loud. <laughs> Stay here, don't leave. Axios. Axios, 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 Axios. Axios. Thank you, Father. We lift up Susan and Michael to you. And in your name we pray. Amen.